timer has started and here is your question. If you have read and understood, can we begin your examination? All right, ma'am. So uh, first, I will uh, I will wash my hands and on uh, PPE if appropriate. And then I'll greet the examiner and will introduce myself, uh, including my name and role. And also, yes. I would confirm the patient's age and date of birth. And I will um, explain to the patient the examination. Um, uh, today, I would like to do an examination of your abdomen and we'll try to do inspection and to feel around and we'll ask you to cough if that's okay. And then I'll ask the patient if um, he's be proceed with the examination. So that's the consent. And I'll um, position the patient, um, but it varies. So but first I'll start with the uh, elevating the head of the head. 45 uh, degree angle, expose the patient uh, from waist upwards. And I'll also offer a blanket to allow exposure if required. And then I'll ask the patient if there's any pain or discomfort. You disappeared. I can't hear you. Uh, color changes in the skin like pallor, jaundice. Uh, hello, ma'am. Dr. Okay. Should I yes. continue? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Continue. Okay. Yeah. So hyperpigmentation, any um, edema, and also the general well-being of the patient. If the patient is cachexic and also will ask for um, confusion by asking patients questions that will assess the uh, orientation to time, um, date, uh, time, the person and also any um, noticeable hernia. So I can ask the patient to cough while observing for any hernia. Um, uh, next is look for the objects or bedside that will give me an idea such as stoma bags, drains, um, any catheter. Then I'll proceed with the inspection of the uh, hand. So I can ask the patient to um, uh, uh, show me the uh, palms and assess for any pallor, any erythema, and any contracture, like two-way trans contracture. As for the um, nails, if there is any spoon shape or whitening of the nail bed, that will give me an idea of any liver problem. We'll assess for finger clubbing by asking the patient to uh, place the nails of the index back to back, and also assess for asterisk cysts by asking the patient to stretch arms out in front and then we'll try to uh, um, cover that the wrist joint for at least seconds and notice for any asterisks. And also uh, using my uh, dorsum of the hand, I'll assess and compare the temperature on both hands to assess the radial pulse by using my index and middle uh, finger pads on the radial side of the wrist. And if there's any dupe trans contracture, I'll palpate for that. Uh, and then I'll move on with the examination of the arms any signs of bruising, excoriation, any needle, 
uh, track marks and any uh, um, hair loss, acanthosis, nigricans. Then I'll proceed with the examination of the face. Uh, face. I'll ask first the patient and look for any um, pallor, jaundice. I'll also look for any um, um, Kaiser flacial rings um, and corneal. Um, next, I'll move on with the um, inspection of the mouth and look for hyperpigmented macules, uh, any ulceration, any signs of inflammation. I ask the patient to stick, stick out the tongue if there's any sign of colitis, candidiasis, etc. Motion of the neck, palpating for the lymphopathy, temporary attention to supraclavicular nodes, especially on the left, as it will suggest most nodes. So the inspector is looking for any spider nevi, um, gynecomastia. And then I'll proceed with the abdominal action. Um, uh, just depositioning, asking the patient to lie on the side with legs uncrossed. And I'll do the inspection of the abdomen at the edge of the uh, end of the bed. I look for stars, any uh, uh, um, bruising, the greater their sign, call and sign any signs of abdominal distension, hernia, and stomas. Then I'll do the abdominal palpation. First, I'll ask the patient to, if there's any pain, if there's any pain, I'll start with that. I, I'll, I'll assess that area uh, or examine that area last. Now I'll first perform the light palpation of the abdomen across all nine regions. And we'll, um, observe, while observing the, uh, for any discomfort, if there's any tenderness, guarding, um, then I have... Yes, you can present your case now. By starting at the right and asking the patient to um, uh, do deep breathing and then eventually towards the right sub region. And then I'll palpate the gallbladder. Um, uh, especially in the right costal margin, midclavicular line, and also for Murphy's sign, if there's any. Then I'll pull the spin, starting from the right iliac fossa, and then palpating one to two centimeters towards the left costal margin. I'll also do palpation of the kidneys, um, using my then my right, trying to uh, right hand over the abdomen, um, and do the same on the other side. I can palpate the aorta, especially if there's no signs of abdominal aortic aneurysm, start your umbilicus and then uh, upwards. And then I'll palpate the bladder in the suprapubic region. But not, um, uh, but, but first I'll uh, tell the patient to empty the bladder. Um, then I'll proceed with the general precaution. I'll assess the liver border, starting from the right iliac fossa, then moving one to two centimeter upwards. Then if there's a uh, uh, change from tympanitic to uh, dullness that's the inferior liver border, and they'll continue it upwards one to two centimeter. If there is any change from um, dullness to resonance, then that's the upper liver border. Then perform spinic precaution from the right iliac fossa towards the left fossal margin. And if there's any changes in the no tone from um, tympanitic to uh, uh, dullness, then that's the uh, spin. But usually it's not. Uh, uh, perform bladder precaution. Uh, from the umbilical region downwards. And then assess for shifting dullness by uh, looking for the transition between um, tympanitic and dullness. Oh, okay. And do abdominal auscultation. Yes, please. Look can for you, brewy. Yes, can you please present your case now? All right. Um, so uh, today I examine a 56 year old male yes. um, who's in six uh, day uh, post op after left hemicolectomy um, due to shortness of breath, abdominal pain, and uh, radiates to the left shoulder tip pain, uh, shoulder tip. Um, and in my examination, uh, the patient is um, uh, has a lower abdominal midline scar with a dressing covering over it. The patient uh, looks slightly dis um, uh, are currently in painful discomfort. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and 
there's no signs of valor, palmar erythema, dupoid transcord fracture, clubbing, or um, any asterixis. And the, there's no supraclavicular uh, lymph node, um, palpable. What is your provisional there's, diagnosis? Okay. Um, for this patient, um, uh, anastomotic P. Yes. Most likely. Yes. Uh, yeah. And then my uh, differentials would be um, ruptured viscous, causing the pneumo, possible pneumoperitoneum. Um, also, uh, abscess. Yes. Um, then how would you manage if it was an estomotic leak? How would you manage this patient? Um, first, I will assess whether the patient is stable or not. If the patient is um, unstable, I will follow the CRISP uh, protocol and will do uh, proceed with the management appropriately. And then if the patient is um, stable, then I will do further um, investigation first. So first, I would like to complete my examination, given the time, and I will proceed with the imaging test. I will do a um, CT scan of the abdomen, and then we'll start the patient on antibiotic, and we'll do a uh, surgical drainage or surgery and start the patient on yeah. Okay, how would you manage the patient's pain? And also give analgesia. Yes, and? By following the WHO pain ladder. Pain ladder, okay. Would you consider giving antibiotic or not? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Okay, how would you take care of um, fluid requirement of the patient? considering it's post-op patient? Oh, um, I will compute for the... Um, uh, so if the patient is unstable, I'll give a uh, at least 500 ml of um, isotonic fluid, Hartmann solution, and then if the patient's stable, I'll keep up with the maintenance fluid, um, but keeping in mind the um, uh, possible like the insensible fluid loss for this patient. Since the patient is short of breath, then my, and also um, if there's any fever, then I'll factor any that in, in the computation. Any signs of you look for? Okay. Uh, yeah. But time has yes, gone. So uh, I allowed you to talk, but then uh, how you should have proceeded? Reading a patient is post-op, and has presented with uh, lower abdominal pain, which is also radiating to the tip of shoulder. So there is something more. Then And then there are complaints of shortness of breath as well. So would you or would you not have go ahead, like gone ahead with your normal abdominal examination? I think, ma'am, I should have done a more focused abdominal examination. No, you should have switched. Uh to your CRISP protocol. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. But then I uh, let you talk. You took two minutes extra uh, for examination explanation as well. But then uh, if it was abdominal examination, even then, yes, you were right. Two minutes extra you took. Even in that, it was not uh, completed. So what I would request that if it's... Uh, the, uh, first of all, you have to know what are the different types of abdominal pain patients can be there in examination, right? So yes, if you know if patient has um, right inguinal region pain, right lower iliac fossa pain, so that is most likely appendicitis. And if it's upper, quad, uh, upper quadrant pain, so it's cholecystitis kind of. So in that kind of pain, uh, you can focus more on whatever the main diagnosis is in your mind and then quickly try to cover it within the given time. Because if a patient was there, then you could have examined very quickly and you would, would not even had the need to talk or narrate. But now since patient is not there, so the quickest would be like to focus more on the symptoms or the region patient is complaining about and then going ahead. But since it was a post-op patient and I made sure that patient has complained of shortness of breath and abdominal pain and like tried to show some severity. And uh, also patient was having dressing which was covering. So that was 
you were supposed to switch it to CRISP protocol and you would have uh, carried on or you should have managed it as CRISP protocol. Thank you, ma'am. Um, um, so in this case, since we should follow the CRISP protocol because in this case, there's complaint of shortness of breath and in painful distress, the patient's in, pa in pain pain painful distress. Like, yes, at the beginning, should I say, um, like to establish or to that I am going to do the, or I'm going to follow the CRISP protocol before proceeding with the uh, clinical exam? Yes, who will answer this question? Because all of you are going for examination. How much you should do before you move to CRISP protocol? You will agree so just, normally. So you agree? Yes. 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 And then yeah, um, because, continue, continue. Don't worry. Yeah. So in the stem, it is written that patient is having a shortness of breath abdominal pain so patient is telling the uh, that uh, he is having pain so that means patient is otherwise conscious but uh, it's an acute emergency situation because of left shoulder tip pain as well as shortness of breath so a complete examination is uh, not required and should not be done because taking 10 minute time uh, examining the uh, whole abdomen and uh, then making a diagnosis is not required in this case. It should directly go for CRISP protocol. We can when, start with the initial, initial greeting. We can yes. start yes. Uh, all the, uh, you know, taking the consent and everything. And then uh, we can say that we are, will go to uh, start with palpation. But yes. uh, superficial the, palpation. Yes, super, you can do light yeah, palpation. Yeah, so, so the moment the you'll do is, superficial palpation, patient, patient will, will scream. jump into. Yes. Yeah. You'll so switch time, to, we'll Chris to Chris Protocol. Yes, very good. Ma'am, uh, I have doubt over here because uh, you mentioned complaints of shortness of breath. But then I can, I mean, like, you know, if in, if that is mentioned in the scenario, then I would say that I'm concerned about the airway and the breathing. So I would like to start off with Chris Protocol straight away. Um, can I do that? You can argue with, uh, with that as well. Yes. Yeah, because, as long uh, as you can justify your reason, you have to go ahead. And then yeah. you can just simply say that patient is complaining of that. So I will not continue with yeah. my regular abdominal exam examination. I will rather switch it to CRISP protocol. And I will make sure if the airway is patent. And then breathing and circulation. So you'll go ahead like this. Yeah. But normally, if patient was there, you'll move. You'll go ahead till uh, superficial palpation. And you'll ask the patient even to if you examiner if you can remove the dressing patient mm -hmm. uh, examiner will say consider so you'll not do it but now its scenario is little different patient is not there you have to imagine and you have to say it okay okay ma'am yeah so just to make sure that i understood it because uh at first when i was reading at the um uh scenario yes without reading the second statement like considering the clinical examination etc i in my mind okay i i need to do chris uh protocol but because in an actual patient definitely i'm not going to do the entire abdominal yes, exam yes but of but like knowing or being aware of the fact that this is a clinical exam <laughs> so in my thinking i think i need to get like most of the points so like i became hesitant at first to like do it and then jump straight into um, abdominal palpation because in reality that's the more sensible thing to do yes. but then because I'm so um, conscious about the <laughs> like uh, uh, criteria you, for the exam or whatnot, the then it Dr. changes Basit's, everything yes do you have Dr. Basit's notes if you can look I into don't, those I, two actually two, I Okay, ma'am. I, I have all the notes except Dr. Bazid's note. I don't know how, where to find the uh, yes. Bazid's. Uh, I'll share uh, again in the group. Uh, actually, uh, he donated them. He gave them to us so we can openly discuss them and we can openly share them. Okay. On Thank page you, number 223, he has done the comparison because in the mock exam, there'll be only two CRIS protocol clinical examination. One is acute mm -hmm. abdomen and then and the second one is acute chest pain both of them at what point you'll uh, convert to CRIS protocol and what is included in CRIS protocol. He has done the comparison of both of these. So it will be good going through it. And uh, CRIS protocol is basically for the critically ill patient. This patient is critically ill. Because, yeah, so that's why you have to 
and the patient will be lying down all the time so it will be accurate okay. you started off very well when you said you will raise the head end and then and then i realized that you haven't picked the main thing that this is you have to convert it uh, you yes, can't go ahead with the regular abdominal examination sorry it's i really, tricked you it's really this is the pro from the difficult station because yes. um, Yes. And, and inside the station, you couldn't decide what I start with crisp or I should just jump for palpation and wait for patient to say that I have a pain and you are returned back to start from crisp or to cold. And in the same time, sometimes the patient, he couldn't uh, act or is perfectly. Yes. You didn't know he is stable, he is comfortable, he is not in pain or distress and you are confused inside the station. You That's see, why it's know, important that you discuss. Yeah. If it's post-op yeah. patient, then it is CRISP protocol. And there are yeah, things as well. And you'll see if uh, patient is wearing stocking uh, as well. Dead stocking. Yes, or, or, or station like this, you say patient shortness of breath. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So you'll read the stem, it will be very evident. You'll read the stem and it will be very clear. So you would not be confused. If it was, uh, if it was normal abdominal examination, then uh, it will not be like this. Uh, we'll do normal abdominal examination as well, but not the same ones which come in exam. It's my own station, it's different little. But if you, if you have a time, I can, I can tell you about one station come in London for yes. abdominal pain with lymph adenopathy. Okay. Yes, please. Thank you. So yes, this uh, abdominal in, in the stain is written in abdominal patient complain diarrhea, abdominal pain, and have lymph adenopathy. Mm, and okay. examine the patient when when you are with the patient, you are confused. You, you don't know. I should examine whole lymph in his body or start with normal abdominal examination. And patient interrupted you and said, uh, my father have a cancer and I afraid maybe I have a cancer like him. So it must be lymphadenopathy of the abdomen, paraiotic and all because uh, yes. it's uh, a significant malignancy of the abdomen. So abdomen examination should be done yes. along with uh, taking care of lymphadenopathy. This is what I think. Yes, that's what I want to say. Sometimes is the stage or the patient uh, already confused, not straightforward, not to tell you examine the abdomen or do you examine the chest? They didn't say but you should, you, you should, Yeah, yeah you should follow the, the esteem. Yeah. Yes. Um, in, the, in the exam, would there always be, uh, uh, are they going to be specific with the uh, examination? Like I'm ex the examinee is expected to examine the uh, chest or the abdomen or sometimes they won't give you anything like um, there are three just clinical do a clinical exam. Three clinical examination stations they are going to be. Even uh, now. Yes, they say just examine the patient. You not decided what system you should examine. Yes. It give okay. you a scenario and say examine the patient. Okay. Only. Okay. Yeah. But but I came to know from Dr. Bazid and all those seniors, they said they stated very clearly. So it's always stated clearly that what you have to do. Okay, thank you. And it will be mentioned, I'm damn sure it will be clearly stated. Do we have Dr. Sunday today? No. Okay, maybe you can tag him right, right and ask him, he will tell you. So mostly yes, they, do, they do, okay. Yes, so any more questions? You were right, we will consider giving antibiotic, considering it can even be sepsis. We don't know about the antibiotics. Um, yes. Are you supposed to say uh, we are going to give according to the trust protocol, or you just yes, give? yes. Mm -hmm. Even my internet is horrible. I actually got disconnected as well in the middle. Like yeah, here. my internet is horrible. I couldn't hear everything. Mm. I would like to know about the patient charts. Are they available outside the uh, door of the uh, cabin, or uh, is it present at the table? during the examination? They'll give you. Uh, no, uh, 
inside, 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 inside the system, with the inside. examiner oh. because now a, a patient is not there, so it will be like with the examiner. Oh, is okay. it a complete file or a simple chart? I mean, a single page or something? Uh, have you <laughs> seen in Buzzy notes and in our regular ones, there is this one EWS. chart? Yes. It's, the, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it's a, a, a single page, page with EWS? Yes. Yes, single page. Yes, yeah. not file. Single page, oh, right. not file. Right, right. That so from has, that you have to yes. deduce all your findings. I mean, exactly. they are not written; they are marked over there. Yes, yes. And that you can ask for if you think that you need to, uh, com like, com to complete the case, you need it. But there, there'll be very little time to ask here and there. You know, yeah. you won't get that much time. It's all about the time and the practice. Yes, thank you. Yes. yes, and here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination. Yes, I will wash my hand. I will introduce myself. I will confirm the patient identity. I will yes. uh, ask patient, I'm here to examine your chest and explain for the steps. In the scenario, he said patient chest pain and uh, difficulty of breathing. I will assist patient according to the CRIS protocol. Very good. Yes. Uh, Ask ask patient to, where is the pain? If he is talking, is that mean he is airway is uh, patent? Okay. Very good. Uh, and uh, I will see for uh, his chest, chest movement, respiratory rate, trachea is central, and for central cyanosis. And for uh, the breathing, dullness, uh, barcation on the chest anterior and lateral and listening for his chest anterior lateral, if there's any decrease of his chest suspected for uh, uh, pneumothorax. If nothing, I will give him oxygen and stabilize airway and breathing, give him oxygen and uh, jump to the C to assessment the how much oxygen, How much oxygen would you consider giving to this patient? Two liter. Okay. Uh, I will see his- uh, what? Uh, through non-breathable non mask. Very good. Yes. Continue I will see his uh, circulation peripherally. Yes. Uh, I will see for um, uh, skin temperature, pulse, uh, blood pressure, capillary refilling, and the skin modeling. How much should be the capillary refilling? L less than two. Very good. Uh, skin modeling also. I would see if the patient have cannula, already have cannula, or I should insert a cannula too large for cannula, uh, give him my fluid, if sure is a urine catheter or I will insert urine catheter. I will draw uh, blood for um, investigation, uh, lactate, uh, blood glucose, electrolyte, and blood culture for calcium sensitivity and cross matching C and safe. I will give him a fluid. I will uh, check his uh, listening for his uh, ca cardiac. I will see for sign of dehydration and sunken eye, dry mouth, and uh, other signs, skin tug. tug. Um, if uh, everything is well, I will go to the D. D by assistivation consciousness level, pupil dilated, or react for uh, the light. And I will expose the patient see uh, if there is any um, wound infection, 
I will uh, offer for the examine the wound. There is any sign of wound infection, discharge, uh, bleeding, and so on. So if the whole thing is stable, I will go to examine the chest normally. Start from the periphery, look to the, his hand, any sign of um, flabbing tremor, any uh, palmaritemia, any sign of his smoking pulse, and uh, look for the respiratory read, C4 uh, um, hail, or central cyanosis, peripheral cyanosis, flapping, and C4 chest in general, looking and palpate for cardiac uh, apex. And for um, chest expansion. Yes, how would, you, and, how would you make sure chest is expanding uh, equally on both sides? Yes, I will uh, put both my uh, hands on his chest and meet Where? the thumb uh, in the middle of the chest. Okay. And meet uh, the thumb in the middle and take uh, ask patient to take a deep breath and recognize my thumb is moving equally or not. How would the chest uh, percussion uh, you'll carry out? Uh, start with the apex of the lung and uh, clavicle and on the intercostal space, on the uh, mid, uh, mid clavicular line, mid axillary line, bilateral, and compare one by one. And uh, listen for uh, his chest, and also examine for tactile fermitas by asking patient to say 99, and uh, bilaterally see if there is any cryptation. After I finish the uh, anterior chest, I will ask patient to sitting and come from back to examine lymph node in his uh, submental, submandibular, uh, cervical, uh, auricular, auricular, and uh, occipital, and examine the chest in the same sequence of anterior by first look for the chest and uh, bulbate for chest expansion and percussion on the chest and auscultation one by one and identify any abnormalities, see for the sacral edema, and after that jump for the lower limb to see if there is any sign of lower limb edema or uh, sign of DVT. Good, yes. Yes, that's, that's all. In any, in any time, uh, the, I see the patient is confused or lose uh, concentration or deteriorated, I should leave everything and start ABC from the beginning. Okay, A, B, C, and what is in D? D, D and e. is, yes. Uh, D for uh, uh, disability, um, conscious level, and uh, yes. pupil. Yeah. And exposure is uh, E is exposure in which you'll also look for uh, squeezing of calf muscles for tenderness. And look for the wound in his uh, his head and the because wound he is well. yeah. All right. Okay. Can you please present your case now? I, I examine patient, 55 year old, was operative for right hip replacement. Yes. Patient is uh, has a chest pain, difficulty in breathing. When I examine the patient, he can talk, and the chest move movement freely. There is no any restriction, and uh, there is no any sign of uh, pneumothorax. I give a patient uh, oxygen circulation. Uh, there is a tachycardia, there is delayed on capillary feeling. I give him IV fluid and surgery so to monitor. Input. How yes. should, uh, what is your provisional diagnosis of this patient? Uh, most probably, a uh, sign symptom come with pulmonary embolism. Then, but how would you manage the pulmonary embolism? Uh, according to the uh, site and size of the pulmonary embolism, if small, yes. I will start with ABC and give a patient. Uh, non-fractionated heparin therapeutic dose. Yes. And uh, uh, if big and uh, compromise, uh, I will uh, give a patient thrombolysis or thrombo. Can you define the term massive pulmonary embolism? What do you mean by it? Massive pulmonary embolism is a, a big pul uh, embolism that obstruction in the main uh, artery, I mean pulmonary trunk, and compromise the patient uh, circulation. Okay, if you were scrubbed, 
in the theater and you were informed about this patient, how would you react or what you would have done? Uh, I, I will ask the um, anesthesia. We'll give him an call, crash call immediately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, what are the investigations that you'll ask for? Uh, it's start from simple investigation ABC, ABC, ESR, and blood gas, just X ray, and the renal function test to assess renal and uh, start with CT scan, pulmonary angiogram. Good. All right. It wasn't that difficult, right? Yeah. Now that you knew. I was uh, actually, it was good. You didn't miss even uh, examining from the back. I was thinking if, uh, if you will remember to examine from the back or not. Yes, uh, anyone can give feedback to Dr. Z. Yeah, it was uh, very good. And uh, I want to make a point that he did very well in switching from uh, CRIS protocol. And at the point of exposure, then he said that if the patient is stable, I'll do the examination. And that time he switched to the main examination. So I like that way yes. uh, he did complete the examination. One thing he has forgotten again that he forgot yesterday as well. Uh, thanking the patient, washing hands. Yes. And, and asking yes. to cover up again. Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is very yes. important. Yes. You lose yes. marks every day. Yes. Uh, yes, you have to say this. Write it down somewhere so that you don't forget. Make it habit. You know, otherwise, like you forgot yesterday, you forgot even today. So it's more likely in the exam during stress, you can forget it again. So you now I'm repeating it because I want you to remember it so that in exam you don't forget it. Thanking the patient, washing hands, and then asking the patient if the patient needs any help with covering up. So these, these two, three things, ethics, and then uh, they give you marks as well. Yes. Thank you. I'm also Otherwise, in this point, uh, one more thing is that yeah. after exposure, um, uh, for a detailed examination of the op notes and the case details, um, and then uh, also to make a documentation of the fact that the, fact that the patient will not be wearing any TED stockings and will yes. not be uh, post-operative uh, thromboprophylaxis. So these are all factors in favor of a PE. True. So those things. Yes. Good. Thank you. Here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood, can you begin your examination? Yeah, I'll begin with washing my hands, introducing myself that I'm one of the surgical uh, candidate for the exam. And uh, uh, I'll confirm the patient's identity. After confirming, I'll uh, explain the things I'm going to do. I'll tell that I'm going to examine the uh, chest area for the complaints uh, the patient came here. And uh, then I'll gain the consent of the patient and yes. uh, after that, uh, I'll examine the patient uh, in sitting position with yes. the exposure of the chest uh, and abdomen area. And yes. uh, after that, uh, I'll begin by inspecting. So initially I'll start the inspection by arms by the side. I'll ask the patient to keep the arms on the thigh and uh, I'll check, uh, I'll inspect uh, for the uh, size of the breast. Uh, any kind of uh, mass on the side, I'll inspect both the sides together and uh, I'll check for the symmetry. Normally uh, the breasts are asymmetrical. 
then I'll check for any kind of discharge from the nipples if there, and uh, I'll check for swellings in uh, related areas like axilla and uh, at the neck. Then uh, inspecting the arms at the side, I'll proceed to arms uh, on the hip and I'll ask the patient to uh, press over the hips in order to tense the pectoralis muscle. Good. So after that, in that uh, situation, I'll again check for the mass and uh, I'll check if uh, with the, uh, the mass moves with the pectoralis muscle after the patient presses or not. And I'll check for the skin condition for uh, it could be uh, there could be scars, there could be uh, redness of the skin, there could be pure day orange uh, uh, changes of the skin. So uh, that could be due to the underlying uh, uh, tumor and uh, there could be teethering or dimpling of the skin that all, all will exaggerate uh, in this situation after completing How this. How would you confirm uh, there are dimpling or uh, pukering of the skin? How would you ask the not, patient to make what position? Uh, I'll ask the patient to uh, take the arms above the head. Above uh, the I mean, head. behind the yes, head. Yes. Yeah, and then good. lean forward. So this will exaggerate the condition. So in that position, I'll do all my inspectory findings again. Yes, good. So completing that, I'll uh, switch to palpation. And uh, in palpation, I'll begin with palpation of the breast and areolar region. I'll begin in a clockwise manner. Yes. So uh, with, I'll uh, do the complete examination of the breast and then areola. And then I'll palpate the tail of the breast. And uh, then I'll switch to uh, palpation of the axilla. For this, I'll reposition the patient and ask the patient to uh, position his uh, arm on my uh, arm, Which for side example, arm? right arm on. Yes. The same side, right yes. on the right side, and I'll examine with the left side on the right side of the patient. And uh, I'll check the axilla, uh, the lateral wall, the medial wall, apex, anterior and posterior. Uh, I'll check, while doing this, I'll check for the lymphadenopathy or any other mass present over there. And uh, if there is any other scar or something uh, abnormal, I'll palpate that too. After palpation of that, I'll uh, palpate the other uh, lymph nodes surrounding like uh, cervical lymph nodes and uh, after that I'll ask the patient to uh, squeeze the uh, breast in order to see if any uh, nipple in, discharge in is what, present uh, or not. In what sequence are you going to examine uh, the palpation? In what sequence are you going to? I mean I start from uh, according to the site First the breast and then tail of the, the uh, breast and then axilla. Are you going to sides. move from yeah. areola to the mass of the breast or so? Uh, the there are two, two ways to of the doing inside. it. Yes, uh, one, yeah, from from areola to outside in yes. a spiral manner. Very good. And uh, uh, clock, clockwise to. manner, both. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, after the palpation. Uh, if the time, uh, I'll uh, also check for the abdominal signs because the patient is uh, presented with breast mass. So, and it's a male patient, so there could be an, any abnormality in the abdomen. So, I'll uh, try to do the abdominal examination. Uh, I'll feel for the renal, if uh, any renal Very mass good. is present, yes. uh, liver enlargement. Uh, I'll also check the inguinal region for any, uh, the scrotal mass or atrophy of the testes. Very and, good. Uh, uh, senile changes and yes. uh, along with that uh, this completes my palpation and uh, I'll ask the patient to cover up and thank the patient and wash your hands and wash my hands yes, yes. Uh, 40 minutes 40 seconds are left 30 seconds okay right you can uh, summarize your case now so I examined this gentleman who came with breast enlargement. Uh, on my inspectory findings, there was a bilateral uh, enlargement of the breast. Uh, on inspection, there was no skin changes. Yes. And uh, there are scars present. And uh, there are no uh, abnormal uh, abdominal signs as well as the, on palpation, there is no uh, lump felt in the breast as well as in the axilla. 
Yes. So my main uh, differential is a bilateral gynecomastia scandry to uh, liver cirrhosis, probably because patient is alcoholic. Alcoholic. What else would you consider as your differential yeah, diagnosis? Uh, this is uh, the most probable. Otherwise, it could be uh, the breast mass due to uh, prolactinemia, due to uh, pituitary tumors. It could be due to renal pathology or yes. uh, feminism uh, of the uh, patient. I'll take these and also into consideration. Could even be drug related. Yeah, it could be some drugs yeah. also. Okay, what are the laboratory work that you'll do or you'll ask for this patient? Okay, so uh, I'll begin with the uh, thyroid levels, uh, T3, okay. T4, TSH, prolactin, hormones, yes. uh, luteinizing hormone, DHE, dihydro, epi, uh, androstone, uh, sulfate levels to check yes. for feminism syndromes. Uh, then uh, testicle tumor markers. markers. Very good, yes. And, and uh, I'll also testosterone level. Yeah, I'll level. also check uh, the visual. Yeah, test. And yeah, also visual field uh, for uh, pituitary adenoma present. It yes. can cause uh, bitemporal hemianopia. So I can do that too. And renal and liver function out. test as well. So what yeah. imaging would you ask for? Uh, mammography can be yes. sought uh, yes. after seeing that if the underlying uh, mass is present yes. and uh, then ultrasound of the yes. swelling, these two things we can Even do. abdominal ultrasound and chest x-ray. Yeah, to check for Rule abdominal of, yes. pathology. Okay, what treatment can you offer to this patient? So this patient is having a bilateral gynecomastia, so treatment of the underlying cause, I'll ask uh, the patient to quit smoking as well as uh, cigarette smoking. So lifestyle and, uh, changes. Then liver uh, functions should be. Lifestyle changes and then uh, so it's conservative and then uh, Hello. surgical. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, reduction mastectomy can be given. Yes. Yeah, now I can hear you. Reduction yes. mastectomy can be done. Yes. Good. With the preservation of areola and nipple. Very good. Okay, excellent. Has he missed anything? Yes. yes, one small thing, very small. When you were examining, uh, when you sh when you were telling me about the ex inspection and everything, then you can ask the patient to lean against the wall and push so that you can rule out uh, the intactness of serratus anterior muscle. If there is no ringing of scapula or nerve involved. Okay, yeah. So just this yeah, one. That's, thing. Very that's good. a good point. Otherwise, everything has been covered. Excellent. Yes. Uh, anyone else want to give feedback? Uh, did he ask for uh, Chevron? Oh, for male patient, you don't need. Okay. If it was female patient, then you can ask. Male to male examination. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any um, what are the stations in which we should ask for chaperon? One is uh, this female breast examination, other is yes. inguinal uh, yes. region examination. Anything else? Which there was we'll one we did chaperon? yesterday. Which one was that, Dr. Fatumata? Can you recall, please? Hello? Uh, one station that we did yesterday. Mm. I can't recall. I'm sorry. <laughs> My own. Maybe. Okay, timer has been started, and here is your question.
Right. If you have read and understood, can you begin your examination? Okay. <clears throat> so I'll begin my examination by washing my hands and uh, greeting the patient. Yes. And uh, confirming his name and age. Yes. And I, and I introduce myself that I'm a surgical candidate for the exam and I'll do his abdominal examination for the complaint for which he is consulting us. Yes. Then I explain the whole procedure that this would involve me looking and feeding at your abdomen from the front and sides and also I may need to look at the inguinal area of this patient. Yes. <clears throat> and then I'll ask her to expose from uh, uh, appropriate exposure for this would be from mid thigh to GP sternum. Okay, but, yes. But I may proceed with the social acceptable exposure from uh, uh, for whole abdomen and then I'll ask for a chevron if available and uh, then I reposition the patient and I'll ask the patient to stand up please. So so I'll begin my inspection by looking for the uh, site, size, shape of the swelling and uh, overland skin color changes or and if there are any scar marks or stry over the abdomen. And I'll ask the patient to do a cuff. In this way, I'm looking for an expensile cuff impulse. Good. Additionally, I'm looking for, uh, uh, for sight of the umbilicus and if it is inverted or inverted. After this, I'll ask the patient to lie down and uh, uh, ask her if, the, if, it is, if there is any pain over the swelling. And uh, I'll assure her that uh, I'll palpate the swelling and if it is uncomfortable, so she can always tell me. After gaining uh, consent for this, uh, uh, I'll check for her uh, temperature of the swelling and if there is any tenderness present. Then I'll look for the edges of the swelling, consistency, margins, if the swelling is reducible, fluctuation, fixity of the overland skin and the swelling to underlying structures, and for translumination and reducibility. Very good. Additionally, at this point, I'll ask the patient to again cuff to look for a palpable expensile cough impulse. <laughs> then I'll perform uh, uh, then I'll perform auscultation over the swelling as it's a periumbilical swelling and uh, auscultate to check whether there are any balsons present or not. Then I'll perform the abdominal examination starting with the light palpation for any mass or areas of tenderness of the abdomen and when then with deep palpation to look if there is any underlying mass present in the abdomen and to look for hepatosplenomegaly. If there is any hepatosplenomegaly or if there is any splenomegaly and additionally I progress the abdomen for shifting dullness and Later on, I'll, uh, I'll ask for uh, examination of inguinoscrotal area to look for any additional hernias and other hernial orifices if they are intact or not. Then I'll ask the patient to sit up and, uh, uh, and I'll do auscultation of her chest to look for any uh, 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 auscultation of a chest to look for if there are any added pet sounds like to cough or wheezing. After that, I'll ask the patient to uh, cover up, thank the patient, and uh, and thank the patient, thank the, and wash, and wash my hands. hands. Yes. yes. What about the journal examination? Leg spur again. Yes, I'm sorry. I should have. I would. I would additionally check for edema. 
and additionally i would check for the lymph nodes additionally in vinal lymph nodes and the uh, supraclavicular lymph nodes also okay in mouth you have to look for any sinuses dehydration oral hygiene eyes for pallor arms and trunks for spider nevi purpura petechi scratch marks okay. etc and legs edema i told you uh, and okay. the bedside if there is any medications or oxygen cylinder or ecg or charts so that okay okay hand examination and i yes. i in hand examination i would look for any splinter hemorrhages or uh, spider nevi or uh, any uh, erythema over her erythema over thin remnants and i would ask the patient to look for any flapping tremors good and uh, and if not i would ask i would look at her eyes to look for pallor and cyanosis okay good thank you now you can present your case Uh, a 54 year old lady presented with the complaint of swelling in perineum bilical region on examination she has a 4 into 5 cm expansile swelling in her perineum bilical region which yes. has uh, smooth borders smooth border uh, smooth surface well defined borders and it is non reducible uh, it is non reducible and uh, there are no overlying skin changes and the swelling is <clears throat> dull to percussion and the bowel sounds are absent of the swelling and what is the uh, consistency is, of the yes swelling yes uh, swelling is uh, firm in consistency and uh, it has uh, it is dull in consistency and the translamination is negative and it is non reducible and the uh, cuff Cuffed. impulse is positive and this so what is your diagnosis provisional diagnosis my diagnosis is that the patient is uh, suffering from uh, non reducible paramblical hernia containing yes. omentum so what management would you offer to this patient after taking detailed history of yes. the patient yes. and examination i would uh, proceed with ultrasound abdomen yes. to look for the defect size and the contents of the swelling and to look for any underlying masses in the abdomen and to look for any uh, changes in the liver uh, like uh, uh, cirrhotic changes in the yes. liver and to yes. look for any intra abdominal ascites and and yes additionally i would also uh, do her uh, blood test for uh, for an aesthetic purposes yes what treatment option would you offer to this patient treatment option will depend upon the size of the defect which is confirmed on ultrasound abdomen if it is less than 1 cm size of defect then i can proceed with the primary repair or primary repair or double pressing of the defect if it is more than 1 cm then i proceed with mesh hernioplasty of this patient for mesh hernioplasty i would go with uh, uh, open and laparoscopic approaches for open approaches uh, i would go with the subtly mesh hernioplasty while also in laparoscopic approach i have the intraperitoneal only mesh hernioplasty approach Can you tell me when is it's ideal to offer a laparoscopic mesh repair to the patient? Uh, laparoscopic approach is best if the hernia size is small, reducible, and the patient has uh, uh, no underlying disease for uh, which laparoscopy may be contraindicated. Okay, good. What about if it's a repetitive hernia? If it's a repetitive hernia, then and I'll proceed with the subtly mesh hernia plasty for this patient. If it's a recurrent one. Good. So feedback. Good, Doctor Prashit. Thank feedback, you. Feedback, everyone. It was good. 
was really, really, really good. good. Yeah, he and covered the, everything. The best thing I like the management part. He covered yeah. it really well. Yeah. And he remembered. So I would like to, to ask uh, yeah. one question, Doctor Kashif. He mentioned in management that he would like to uh, before proceeding for the surgery would like to assess the liver. I mean, uh, what's the relevance over here? Uh, the relevance is that if the patient is suffering from underlying liver disease like cirrhosis, which is causing increased abdominal pressure and hernias, so here first need to be uh, first is the liver condition would need to be controlled and to decrease the uh, to decrease intra-abdominal ascites. Otherwise, the hernia may recur. So uh, that's a general condition with any mass, not specifically for the liver, right? Uh, no, it's what for hernia. What he means to say? Uh, I mean, abdominal. I mean, with any mass, the intra-abdominal pressure can get raised, and uh, this yeah. hernia can occur. Yeah, right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Timer uh, has started. Wait. Timer has started, and here is your question. Right. If you have read and understood, can you begin your examination? Um, I'll go into the room. Uh, I'll wash my hands. Um, I'll introduce myself first, and then after that, I'll confirm the patient's name and uh, age is 57 years old. Um, I'll explain the uh, the examination to him. I'll say that uh, I've been today. I've been asked to examine your chest. Uh, this will involve me looking at from the foot end of the bed, uh, looking at it chest from the front and the back, uh, and performing some tests and uh, palpating different areas of the chest. Um, I'll check if there's any pain beforehand. Once he's given me the consent, um, uh, I'll ask him to uh, take off his shirt uh, so that I can get the entire exposure of his entire chest. And I'll ask the patient to sit for this examination. Good. Uh, I'll start the examination by examination from the end of the bed. I will first check for any obvious treatment that he's taking, if he's taking uh, oxygen or any supplemental oxygen or anything as such. If he's having any shortness of breath on rest, um, if he's uh, having any uh, difficulty in speaking full sentences, um, I'll check for any obvious cyanosis um, and uh, I'll check for the chest movements if it's equal from the front end of the bed. Um, in the beginning, I'll check if there's any cough or any V's uh, or any obvious uh, strider that I can visualize from, uh, from in general. Then I'll ask the patient to, uh, for examination of his hands, I'll first look at the dorsal aspect to check for any leukonychia or any vicronychia. And then I'll ask the patient to, for the palmar as, uh, to turn over the hand to check the palmar aspect. Then I'll check for, I mean, I'll ask him to extend his hands and uh, pop his uh, wrist backwards to check for any uh, tremors, uh, any asterisks. This can be seen in uh, CO2 retention, so I'll rule out that. Then I'll check for his uh, respiratory rate and I'll check his pulse rate as well. Um, then I'll move on to the face. Well, I'll move on to the face and I'll ask the patient to uh, lower his uh, lower eyelid so that I can check for any pallor. Um, I'll also check for just pictures uh, that's present. Uh, then I'll ask him to open his mouth and I'll check for the tongue for any central cyanosis. I'll ask him to lift up his tongue. Um, then I'll ask him to lie down flat on the bed, uh, lie down on, uh, on the bed on a 45 degree angle. I'll like, inspect the neck for the JVP. I'll ask him to look towards the left. Um, I'll also perform the hepatojugular reflex after confirming there's no pain in his tummy. I'll press in the right upper quadrant of his abdomen to check for any trace in JVP. Following that, I will uh, go ahead with the detailed examination of his chest, for which I'll inspect the chest closer. Um, I will uh, check for the uh, symmetry of movements. Um, I'll check if the air entry is equal on both sides. I'll check for any obvious scars or any, sino uh, scars or any sinuses 
or in any the shape asymmetric, of the, uh, asymmetric and the shape of the chest as well shape of the chest as well um yeah um and, and then i'll move on to palpation uh, in palpation again i'll confirm the chest expansion by uh, uh, palpating with the lower aspect of the chest with my fingers and my thumb will be in the middle now this patient to take a deep breath and check the um, if my uh, thumbs are moving away in an equal distance so fashion. how long would uh, you um, place your thumbs on patient's chest to make sure that they are expanding uh, to just two to three breaths to check if the expansion is equal on the sides yes. and then i'll check for the upper aspect by placing my palm of my chest on the uh, primary area and i'll again check for the uh, distance from the midline uh, my thumb going away from the midline um following that uh, i'll begin the percussion um, in the anterior aspect uh, i'll also check for the apex speed on uh, go on to per percussion um, i'll start off with the supraclavicular area then the clavicle and then after the intraclavicular and the supramammary inframammary and then the axillary and infraxillary region i'll percuss and then after that followed by that i'll check for um, uh, I mean, i'll auscultate the patient i'll check for the air entry I check if the air entry is equal on both sides, and if it's equal in all quadrants. Uh, followed by that, I'll check for the vocal parameters. I'll ask the patient to uh, say 99 every time I'm placing the stethoscope. Good. Followed by this, ask the patient to take a step forward, and I'll first start off with the lymph node examination of the neck. Uh, I'll check the submental, submandibular, preauricular, postauricular, and occipital lymph nodes, then upper jugular, digastric, middle, and lower, anterior triangular lymph nodes, and the posterior posterior triangular lymph nodes. uh specifically uh, to check for any lymph node metastasis then i'll carry on with the examination of the posterior aspect of the chest where i'll first do the chest expansion uh to check that the expansion is equal and then followed by that i'll um uh, auscultate the chest to check for air entry which is equal on both sides and then i'll uh, percuss the chest in the posterior aspect as well i'll also be looking for any crackles or any fine um, added, i mean any added sounds in the base of the lungs on bilateral infraxillary and uh, Uh, infrascapular region to check for any added sounds uh, and i'll confirm Good. i mean i'll uh, complete vocal resonance by asking the patient to say 99 and examining along the posterior med um, medial scapular line as well uh, i will complete the uh, examination by uh, checking i mean ruling out any uh, deep I mean, peripheral edema and uh, check the calf muscles for any tenderness uh, just to check for the presence of any dvt uh, following this i will thank the patient I will watch so you'll continue hand. the same examination on the back as well before you thank uh, you lost for the I, I just did the back exam you did okay i'm sorry i just did the back exam i i asked the patient to sit forward and yes. i examined the back completely i'll first yes. do the inspection then the palpation percussion auscultation i i said that okay. i said that sorry okay yes you'll thank um, the patient yes yeah You lost the patient, patient if patient um, and needs I, uh, any help in dressing up, and then you'll wash your hands. Yeah, I'll wash my hands. Also, in the inspection, I forgot to check for clubbing. Man, I wanted to check for clubbing also. Okay. Uh, checking for the shadows. Uh, Can the... you present your case now, please? Exactly on time. So, Very good. Uh, examined uh, John, a 57-year-old gentleman, was presented um, with uh, complaints of productive cough for the past two weeks. Yes. Um, and a low-grade fever. on my examination there was equal i mean on inspection there was no obvious scars or any sinuses there was no obvious asymmetry um, between um, on on the either sides um on palpation the uh, chest expansion was equal on both sides and uh, uh, percussion was normal as well and on auscultation um, there was normal vesicular breath sounds on both sides and maybe some added sounds uh, so what is your happened. differential diagnosis for this patient Considering his age, uh, my differential diagnosis would be uh, COPD. Yes. Or uh, age and being smoker. Yes. What being, else can you consider? Uh, I, I would also consider asthma uh, as Good. a possibility of a differential. How should this patient uh, be managed? Across. How um, should this? Yes. And uh, technically, uh, I would try to optimize this patient um, for the operative. I mean. Uh, as much as possible i'll first investigate the patient with the chest x ray uh, i'd like to send a sputum sample uh, and an abg as well to identify any obvious uh, um, i mean uh, yes. deficits or anything um then i would do a complete uh, respiratory function test i mean spirometry and uh, uh, respiratory function test so if a patient with copd has to undergo an operation what are the risk 
the risks that you would try to reduce? So first of all, I will uh, try to optimize his patient before surgery. Uh, I would advise him smoking cessation at least Good. six to eight weeks prior to the surgery. Uh, I would inform the on-call anesthetist, I mean, the anesthetist in charge of the case and the consultant surgeon in charge of the case. I would uh, uh, inform my consultant anesthetist that there's a possibility that this patient would need a HTU or an ITU bed in the post-operative period. Um, then uh, I would try to prehabilitate the patient as much as possible and I would prevent, I mean, I would plan this patient for open surgery rather than laparoscopic surgery uh, in this case and a uh, uh, shorten the time frame, um, shorten the time period of uh, surgery as much as possible, and uh, I would pr provide a regional anesthesia um, instead of general anesthesia if that's possible. Very good, very good, excellent. Yes, anyone else uh, to give feedback? It was excellent. He covered everything. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Anyone yes, else? it was uh, almost an excellent examination. Yeah. It was very good, actually. So, uh, as he said uh, later on, that clubbing was missed initially, and but uh, he covered up later on. So it's uh, as one good thing as... during the examination was yes. consent before uh, going back. Consent. Yes, uh, that's what? why I uh, also missed consent before going uh, back of the back to of the, the back patient. of the patient. Yes. That's why asking I asking the patient, telling the patient that I'm now I'm going to examine you from the yes. back, and. Okay. Uh, it is important just it's important to, yes whenever you are going behind the patient uh, for examination reason. it's yeah. did he mention yeah okay it's mandatory to say that i'm going to examine you from back are you okay with this okay and uh, in presentation uh, did you mention the barrel shaped chest no no, I didn't no. Mention that. this, uh, this you is have put uh, copd as your copd yeah you well, have put COPD yeah. as your main differential. So shape of and the on chest. percussion you said uh, it would be otherwise. Test. It should be uh, a little yeah. hyper resonant. Hyper resonant, yeah. Mm. Hyper resonant chest. On percussion. And uh, what about auscultation? What kind of sounds uh, you'll see? We Check can mention that. I mean, Conclusive. you said that uh, there'll be added breath sounds, yeah. but we can mention like V's uh, in COPD or something. Yeah. So yeah. these three things. And uh, in management, it was excellent one. Uh, you did not go with the uh, the same stem which was given in the notes. I mean, MAM has changed a little bit. So yeah. excellently, you said that you will go for sputum examination. So there was fever also uh, mentioned. So yeah. we may go for CBC and ESR and uh, give some right. antibiotics yeah. Yeah. also. That yeah. can be added on, I think. Yeah, yeah. low-grade yeah. fever as well. Good, yes. Yeah. Actually, but otherwise, show... uh, he did manage it yeah, very well. Yeah, he did well, yeah. Uh, if he keeps on, uh, like he just uh, covers the small mistakes that he has done today, then he's excellent. Yes, little uh, Thank you, practice everyone needs, you know. Otherwise, yeah, good, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, I best, the best thing I found with Dr. Murli was that he changed uh, uh, his management protocol according to the stem. He did not yeah. go with the uh, the same stem which is given in notes. And that's a very good thing because the stem can change. He's intelligent, yes. Yeah, I know, but actually it is there in STEM as well, but uh, usually, I mean, MAM has not added that the patient is going to be planned for surgery. That's the only... Yes, uh, no. that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, maybe the case can come that way also. Yes, patient, it can come. Uh, it's normally coming for a cuff yes. or something, just examine. Yes, mm, yeah. it can. But like I have my own, yeah. so uh, don't even want to copy them, you know. I have my own business, so it's better. Yeah. But uh, your point is to also, Dr. And... Uh, just yes, please continue. Yes, yeah. Just write the answer to the previous question that you had asked. Why wouldn't we do? I mean, why is it relevant to for the hepatomegaly in a patient who is having hepatomegaly? If you do parameter hernia repair, the moment you open into it, there'll be ascitic fluid coming out. There'll be wound delayed complication and healing, you know, healing problems and such. So you yeah. wouldn't uh, consider operating. Yeah, on that is also a good point. Of course. Yeah, you won't consider yeah, operating but... on. No, no, I, I knew that uh, he's right. I just wanted to know, I mean, what's the relevance? So it you was, won't it, this, is, this is also a good point. The yeah, you won't, is you won't put a mesh. You won't uh, uh, plan for uh, non-elective surgery. Uh, and uh, right. also uh, uh, tissue repair is preferred in that case. Yeah, and uh, I think the hypoproteinemia due to liver enlargement yeah. cirrhosis will also not let the wound yeah. heal. Uh, that, also. that also. Yeah, that's a good one. Good.
Yes, and here is your question. Right, if you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination. Oh. No. Um, so um, I'll start with um, washing my hands first and then introducing myself to the patient and then also um, identifying the patient's um, name and age. Then I'll explain the procedure I want to do for this patient. Um, but um, and then also consent the patient for the examination. And then upon, um, then I'll ask for the patient if there's any sign of pain. And then because this patient is presenting with severe abdominal pain, then I'll start with light palpation. And then if the patient is in severe pain, then I'll switch to the uh, CRISP uh, protocol um, because the, the patient has severe abdominal pain and it's uh, with abdominal distension and then tender abdomen. So I will check because um, if the patient is communicating to me, then I'll know that the, the airway is patent. Then I'll move to the breathing of this patient to make sure that there's equal um, um, air entry, the chest expansion is fine, that the patient is not sinus, and then the, um, um, there are no um, distended uh, veins as well. Then I'll make sure that I move straight to the circulation of this patient, um, trying to uh, fix two white ball cannulas. Um, after checking the pulse, the blood pressure, and then um, starting uh, IV fluids, um, one liter start, and then once I've already collected blood for CBC, and then um, um, urea electrolyte, and then the ABG. And then I will make sure, hello? Yes. Yes. So, um, because this patient, um, then I will make sure that I expose, um, do the disability, know that the patient's um, GCS is fine, that he's fully conscious. Then I'll, exp um, whilst I've, by this, uh, I've already um, done the exposure. So now after doing, because I've done the life for a patient and then knowing that the patient is a severe pain, so I won't, I won't proceed to the um, um, deep palpation. But if the patient is all right, I will do the uh, abdominal examination and then... Um, Just do, suppose uh, it is uh, appendicitis. How would you go about an exam? So if it's appendicitis, I've already um, to do the general examination. Yes. Um, uh, do the general examination uh, at the hands, the pulse, whether it's um, a patient has the shikadia or not, whether a patient is sinus or has jaundice from um, also check for um, any um, signs of dehydration, then move to the um, eyes and then check for anemia um, for, and also the mouth check for any signs of dehydration and signs of pallor. Then I'll do uh, abdominal examination. I'll start with the light palpation, checking all the uh, nine regions, um, nine quadrants of the abdomen. Yes. And then, but, but before then, I'll ask the patient for the um, area of uh, pain first. Then I'll end with that area. Then after I'll move to deep palpation, um, 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 ending with the right um, um, iliac fossa. And then I'll do some um, check for rebound tenderness as well. And then I'll check for rock sink signs and then the obturator signs as well, and then the sewer sign. Um, also, I will do um, palpation, deep palpation of the organs, the liver, and then also of the spleen, and also ballot the, the kidneys as well. I'll also do the um, hernia orifices as part of the abdominal examination. Okay. But before the, 
even before the palpation, I should have said I'll do the inspections first um, to inspect the abdomen for any signs of uh, scars or uh, abdomen moving with respiration, um, or whether there is any um, visible distension or not, as said in the, um, um, the stem that he has distended abdomen. Then from the um, inspection, that's, that, that's when I'll move to the palpation. And now I finish with the palpation, I'll do um, how do you call it, back portion of the abdomen um, to see if it's um, hypertympanic or there's any signs of ascites also uh, by doing the um, back portion for shifting dullness. Then I'll auscultate um, into the, um, to check for the bowel sounds if they are hyperactive or diminished. I'll also check for signs of um, bruise as well in this patient. Yes. Then how would you conclude your examination? What would so you I'll do? Yeah, so I'll conclude my examination by... Uh, Did um, you examine the lymph nodes? Yes, in the, checking for the lymph nodes, checking for the supraclavicular lymph nodes and then the inguinal lymph nodes as well. Okay and deep abdominal lymph nodes, what I don't think I can palpate it in this case. Yes. Then you'll thank the patient. Yes, uh, then I'll thank the patient. The wash patient my to hand. cover up, yes. To cover up and then wash my hands. Yes. Okay, can you present your case now? So, um, I presented a 22-year-old male um, that presented with um, history of vomiting and then severe abdominal pain. On examination, the patient is um, is tachycardic, um, uh, ephebrile with um, um, distended uh, abdomen, and then also had um, right iliac fossa tenderness with marked abdominal uh, tenderness. Yes. So what is your differential diagnosis? So differential diagnosis is acute appendicitis. It could yes. also be it could also be uh, um, diverticulitis, but it's not common in them. Or uh, duodenal ulcer. Uh, yeah, it could be a perforated. Perfor it could be a perforated yeah. uh, duodenal also a perforated viscous. Could be a Crohn's disease. Crohn's disease. Yes. Activated. Yes. Activated Crohn's. Yes. So, what investigations would you ask for to confirm your diagnosis? So, I'll uh, I'll request for. Uh, abdominal ultrasound and erect abdominal x-ray as well to know if there is any uh, under the diaphragm, if there's any perforation as well. Okay, and what should be the treatment? Uh, I'll manage this patient um, according, because I've said according to the CRISP protocol. Um, so this patient should be into the theater for surgical uh, approach. Uh, which uh, approach would you recommend for this patient, open um, or laparoscopic? No, I will recommend open because this patient has um, severe abdominal pain with distended abdomen and then has marked tenderness. So what would you do if you open the abdomen and you encounter blood in the peritoneal cavity? When, I open, when you open the abdomen? And you find a blood? Blood. Uh, if I find blood, and then I will inform the. Um, but it's a it's a male patient, so yes. I will cross match blood. Um, I'll cross match blood, save blood, and then inform my um, consultant. Yes, it's a male patient, so you cannot find blood in this one. Good, thank you. Yes, Valentine. Oh. Actually, this was um, toxic megacolon, but then it had mm. to have, um, yes, had to have a normal what? abdominal examination because, uh, okay. yeah, I realized I didn't have any stem for appendicitis, but then I asked you to. Okay. Yes, this one, yes. Digital rectal examination. So, 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 like, so, like, so, like, I, I just, I got up to so I started with the CRISP protocol because the patient has the severe abdominal pain with abdominal distension and all the signs of but peritonitis. We discussed, 
two crisp protocols only post ops only post ops yes okay. you have to remember this i only forgot i forgot crisp protocols hmm. will be there and they'll be post op this is post pre op the patient came with the complaint so you had to do the regular abdominal examination then first okay yeah okay all right oh, I'll, good i'll remember that yeah good learning yeah at least yeah okay anyone else want to give feedback to dr fatima ta distal rectal examination you have to do uh, yes. any patient yeah. with abdominal pain comes abdominal the, it's not yeah, complete without yes yeah yeah that's right good this case Uh, toxic megacolon. Is that the toxic megacolon? Okay. Here, you can see. Uh huh. Uh, but this is not asked in the exam seat. So, uh, only the abdominal conditions that come is uh, if it's uh, it's acute appendicitis, acute cholecystitis, uh, acute diverticulitis. If the patient is old. or parambilical hernia four okay okay so this is like my case just for the practice should she mentioned or not i i mentioned the rough thing right, right. the the, the, the yeah. Yeah, yeah i missed i missed i'm sorry yeah, yeah that's fine okay. yes So timer starts and here is your question. Hold on. I can't see. Oh. Okay. Is it visible? Yeah, I can see now. Good. Right. If you have read and understood, kindly begin your examination. Yes. So uh, I will wash my hand. Yes. I will introduce myself. I will confirm patient identity. Yes. Then I will take permission for the uh, examination. Then after that, uh, I will explain the procedure. Then uh, <coughs> I will ask whether patient is in pain at the moment. Then I will explain the exposure, which uh, include the uh, uh, exposing the uh, lower part of the tummy and uh, uh, the uh, upper part of the leg. They are keeping under pant on. They also ask whether the patient would like to have a chaperone, so please. So then uh, positioning. So I would like to examine the patient first uh, on standing. So I will have to first observe the patient, uh, the skin around the uh, the iguana region, then the upper part of the uh, abdomen. Then I would like to check uh, everything from uh, from front and from side just to. Get a, a feel a better look at it. Then I have the patient to cough and check whether the experience of a cough impulse. Then I also ask the patient to try to reduce the swelling, whether uh, it's possible or not. Then uh, after that, uh, I would like to, uh, of course, to palpate uh, the patient because while looking at the skin, I will check for any form of scar. Any form of uh, needle or sinus or any redness, or uh, so I'll check both sides and starting from the normal, then going to the abnormal. Then any so, then I will tell the patient I would like to palpate the, I mean, feel the lump that the patient is having any pain. Please uh, let me know so I will be gentle with it. Then I will start uh, by, uh, of course, while looking at so I would also like to check for the size of the lump, so the size, the shape. So yes. then I will now from palpation. So I'll first feel the skin all over the lump area to check for temperature changes. Then also check whether the place uh, is painful. Then after that, I would like to 
uh, that uh, now I would like to now uh, feed the consistency of the lump. Then, uh, of course, I, my, my examination will already start from the LD side and go to the uh, abdominal side. Then, uh, yeah, at every step, I will have to take permission for the patient, letting them know what I'm, what I'm about to do. Then, after that, uh, I will try to reduce it. It's not possible. I will feed the knob, I will feed the edge of the knob. Then, I will also try to examine the, uh, the uh, scrotum. Is go through, then I'll check for uh, both citrate papi detectives, then the neck of the testis, I mean, and the cord, and check for the net on the scrotal neck, whether uh, the swelling extends to the scrotal or not, to form a or not. Then, after all this one, then now I will, I will not ask the patient to lie down, supine. So, while lying down, <coughs> I also tell the patient to try to reduce the lump if it's possible or not. Then uh, patient, I also ask patient to cough or try to raise the neck to increase the abdominal pressure so that we have the uh, impulse. So then to, if the, uh, the, uh, the lump is not like in this case, we'll just feel and check the area. But if it's visible, then I will try to perform a receive uh, test uh, whereby I have to occlude the, the uh, deep inguinal ring and then uh, uh, also try to put another finger on the uh, posterior or uh, wall of the inguinal canal. So I'm also on the femoral ring to know whether uh, any is coming from any of those sides. So, but while palpating, I will keep asking the patient whether the patient is having any pain or any discomfort. So then after that, then I would like to proceed uh, and uh, palpate the inguinal lymph node, both the transverse and the deep one, inguinal lymph node for both sides. Then after that, I would like uh, to listen uh, to the lump with stethoscope. <clears throat> with the best side for any form of brute or presence of a uh, bowel movement. So then by movement sand. Then after that, I would like uh, uh, to perform a translimination uh, test. So passing light through the lump, so to see whether it translimates or not. Then uh, after that, I would like uh, just to complete my examination by uh, Examine the uh, complete uh, adrenal examination and also uh, perineal and the data data examination. Okay, you'll auscultate as well. The yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that already. Okay, sorry. Yes. Yeah. And uh, what else would you do? So uh, I will wash my hand. I will offer to. Uh, so I will, I will turn the patient and I will offer to uh, to help the patient get dressed. So I will also like to complete my examination, perform a complete abdominal examination, yes. then the chest examination and the uh, perina and the uh, digital examination. So uh, today I examined a 62-year-old uh, <coughs> old man uh, with a right agonoscotal uh, uh, swelling, which is about a uh, four by five centimeter over in shape that's located just uh, above and the uh, media to the inguinal ligament. Then, uh, so the swelling does not extend to the scrotal sac and the swelling is not reducible. And so, however, uh, uh, there's no uh, boy sand in the, swe in the swelling and the swelling does not transliminate. So, uh, based on the find on my findings, my most my most uh, my diagnosis will be my differential diagnosis will be on uh, right side the uh, inguinal uh, ileum. Okay, how would so you confirm like, what type of hernia is it? Is it direct or is it indirect? So uh, to confirm, I, uh, the absolute confirmation is during operation, but uh, during examination, we can do the uh, deep, uh, deep inguinal ring occlusion test to know whether the hernia is coming from the deep ring, which is show direct, and uh, whether from the posterior wall, which is showing direct, or whether from the femoral, which is show femoral hernia. So I okay. will also get mixed. So. Then, other uh, than hernia, what other differential diagnosis? So, I also like to rule out the uh, inguinal lymph node uh, uh, swelling, then yes. also femoral hernia, then femoral uh, aneurysm, first aneurysm of femoral uh, artery, then maybe abscess in the inguinal scrotal region, or even the uh, tumors in that same region. Or it can even be simple like lipoma. Okay. Yes, or even lapoma, yeah. yes. Uh, how should the patient be managed? So uh, the management of this patient, first, uh, after taking proper uh, uh, issue and examination, I will try to 
uh, well, the third on uh, the main cause of exam. Uh, after that, I would like to manage the patient. The major management will be uh, surgical management if it's anemia. So prior to that, we can uh, take the blood sample on baseline blood analysis just to prepare for surgery. And uh, since it's anemia, uh, hardly there's no routine need for imaging. So and the, and the uh, surgery can be done either through open or laparoscopic approach. So open approach can be uh, Lichtenstein lightweight method. Then uh, uh, laparoscopy can be either tap or tap. Good. Can you tell me what you understand by the modified Bassini herniography? So modified Bassini herniography uh, is the one that uh, we try to uh, pass uh, on the external oblique aponeurosis behind the somatic cord. So bringing this uh, somatic cord sub into the subcutaneous fascia. Using non-observable, yes. Okay, good. Yeah, proline. Using proline. Non, yeah. Non-observable. Uh, non-observable sutures. Good. Okay, can you tell me uh, if you covered when you were discussing palpation, if you confirmed the temperature and the tenderness, the edges, yes, consistency, I want to, I want to, yeah. surface, pulsility, yeah. all these, uh, some of them I think you missed. Uh, uh, the, uh, and I then reduce, reducibility with the deeping vinyl ring in relation yes, to the Yes, I did that. Okay. I did that. I so the only one, the only one I, I did not mention is a post up on the position of uh, during palpation. Then I should have mentioned uh, the kind of a consistency which we do it. Yeah. So, but on palpation, I would tell for, of course, I tell for the border, the boundary, the visibility, the patient cannot reduce it. So which, which was done while standing and also while lying. Yeah, good. Thanks. Yes, patient uh, mostly will be standing. All right, anyone else want to give feedback to Dr. Sunday? Yeah, it was really good, ma'am. We covered everything. Yeah. Uh, ma'am, just in this examination, the patient will be standing for most of the, most standing. Of the examination. Yes, yeah. yes. Just uh, chaperone as well, yeah? And yes, I yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, in this and, one, uh, definitely, yes. Yeah, um, just, uh, I mean, I, I couldn't get a clarity with the uh, Basile notes. So first, uh, in palpation, you ask the patient to um, uh, reduce the hernia himself. And then after that, we do the deep ring occlusion deep ring, test. Yes. Occlusion yeah. test with, yes. with the reduced hernia with the, with the patient after he reduces it. And then we put our finger over the deep ring and then we check if, uh, and then we perform that. So that, yes. that's the only test that we do. We don't do any other tests at all. Zines and the imagination and everything is not required. No? Yes, yes. Just, yeah. If I understood you right, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, it's not mentioned scrotal, in the of the scrotal neck and... Uh, uh, yes, that Dr. Sandek. Separation from the testes. Oh, yeah, he covered that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if he covered a relationship with the No, that's... Energy. I asked him, he said he covered. Maybe I missed it as well. What? Relation of the relation of the swelling with the pubic tubercle. Yeah, I said I said uh, the, the swelling is located uh, above a medial. Mm. He maybe he said above it. Above medial, I mean. what? I think he pubic yeah. pubic tubercle. Oh, good pubic tubercle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's distortion in the voice as well. I couldn't hear everything, so oh, sorry maybe. For uh, that. No, it's uh, it's network, you know, mine yeah. maybe or yours. I don't know, but mine is also very bad. So that's why I couldn't hear everything. So I asked you again. So that's all oh, right. Sorry. Thanks. Okay. Yeah.